In this example, we're given a few sets of vectors in R3, and we're asked to determine which ones are a basis for R3. Any basis in R3 has to have exactly three vectors in it. That's a really handy theorem. Any basis for a vector space has to have the same number of vectors as the dimension of the vector space. So if you have a five-dimensional vector space, any set that's a basis for that vector space has to have exactly five vectors in it, no more, no less. So the dimension of R3 is three. And so we can see right away B1 here only has two vectors. So the answer for B1 is no, too few vectors. And likewise, B2 has four vectors, that's too many. So again, easily we can say, no, too many vectors. Well, what about B3? It has exactly three vectors. So we don't say yes, we can say maybe. Now we have to check and see if B3 satisfies the conditions of a basis. And there are two conditions, first, the set has to be linearly independent, and second, it has to be a spanning set. So that means that the span of B3 has to equal R3. Well, in R3, or Rn for that matter, this is a pretty easy thing to check using the invertible matrix theorem. So what we're going to do is we're going to say, let the matrix A be the matrix whose columns are the vectors in this set B3. And if we row reduce that matrix, you could do that on your calculator, we'll get the three by three identity. And so by the invertible matrix theorem, the columns of A form a basis for R3. And the columns of A is really slang for the set containing the columns of A. And that's just B3. So we can say, so B3 is a basis for R3.